Thanks Birch Living for sponsoring this video. Alrighty, let's take a look. Actually, first I want to talk about the doors. Double door closet with no ability to open from the inside. <laughs> Sketchy. You're gonna see a common theme here, which is Marla's room is a place where we store clothes, winter clothes, various bags and clothes. Obviously there's clothes inside here, clothes inside here, various clothes and a tapestry in there, and there's more clothes over here. This is a rug that we've had for quite a few years now from Urban Outfitters. I actually love it a lot, so I think it'll stay. Here's our darling's little crib, her change table, along with the very, very blank wall. This curtain here is from the previous owner. It's giving distressed, and it was here throughout the entire renovation, so so I'm pretty sure it's time has come to an end. Over here, there's something really cute about the fact that Marla's clothing is so small right now, and so she actually doesn't need a ton of clothing storage. Oh, oh, and the one thing we did mount to a wall. Guys, she grew over a centimeter in one month. It was very disturbing. You guys know I dread hanging things on the wall. This is the system that I have devised to try and picture all of my ideas together. The wall color is locked in, so I'm dropping in this Benjamin Moore Hawthorne yellow, and then I'm gonna add all the non-negotiables. We have a crib, sideboard, changing table, rug, and also a new addition, this house-style floor bed. Mm. When we will transition Marla to this bed is to be determined. So far, this is cohesive in the most classically nursery, muted wood tones. It's time to add the personal touch. Every area of this bedroom is gonna have a different little inspo. This is the moment that got me on this art museum theme for Marla's room. We were at the Art Gallery of Ontario because crazy fact, our previous landlord had his own exhibit at the AGO, like a room dedicated to his artwork. I recall Marla had a very judgmental facial expression, quite the art critic. So we're gonna give her lots to judge and critique. First, the salon. Not a beauty salon, but the definition where it's a gathering of people held by an inspiring host. Ooh. The salon originated in Italy in the 16th century and it had a thriving time in France throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. Salons became the first public displays of art and they were a breeding ground for enlightenment and the French Revolution to claim things like culture and art from the elite classes. Instead of careful content curation or like a singular focus, Salons just packed in the art, wall to wall, as much as possible so the viewers could take in as much as possible. I kind of like to think of this as like a pre-internet social media gathering. Nowadays, we often refer to this frenzied placement of art as like a gallery wall or a salon wall. Did I just go through all that to tell you that we're putting a gallery wall into Marla's bedroom? Yes, but at least we learn things along the way. The next time you see a gallery wall, you can say, ah, yes, 17th century social media, or something like tax the rich, that kind of energy. I wanna really lean into the museum aesthetic with this like cable system, which I also really respect because you can change the art without putting more holes into the wall. Love that. And obviously we're gonna get fancy with the frames. I'm also going to make an Alexander Calder mobile and a botany display inspired by a museum that I have never visited in my life. We're gonna learn a lot of fun art facts today. While you brace yourself for the extensive DIY projects that you are about to witness, a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Birch Living. We've enjoyed two years of great sleep on our Birch mattress and for this makeover, Marla is getting a new Birch mattress too. Birch Living is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. All of their non-toxic mattresses are made in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It was important to pick a Birch mattress made of natural and organic materials because we can sleep easy knowing that we're avoiding the harmful off-gassing that can happen in the manufacturing process. In addition to being a better mattress for me, Birch is also committed to being better for the planet. I love that throughout the creation of their mattresses, Birch ensures that their materials are produced and harvested sustainably. They now also have the Birch Lux mattress, a premium upgrade to their original, well-loved Birch natural mattress. The best part of Birch is that they deliver right to your door for free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. Each Birch mattress also comes with two of their EcoRest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. We have ours right here. 
they're still breathable, comfortable, and better for the environment. We really love our Birch mattress. We think you will too. If you're looking for a new mattress, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash withwendy and get 20% off your mattress plus two free pillows. If you're looking for a new mattress for your little ones, you can also check out their new Birch Kids line. Not feeling 100% today. So actually going to just tackle emptying this drawer. Some old cloth diapers. Little drawer, oh boy. This is some old clothes. And the bottom drawer. New clothes that doesn't fit her yet. I do have a plan for where this is gonna go. And all this stuff on top as well. Okay. I feel like it's obvious why I put this off. One, it's in Marla's room, so the moment she's sleeping, I can't do it. But also, it's very emotional. This little dress, she wore it when we did a little photo shoot while this house was under renovation. This dress, she wore to be a cute little flower girl for my sister-in-law's wedding. She was supposed to walk down the aisle as a flower girl, and I still got to hold her hand walking down the aisle because she wasn't like that sturdy yet. Paired it with these little shoes. Her cousin was the other flower girl and she had a bubble gun, which ended up working perfectly because she walked down the aisle with the bubbles and Marla went down the whole aisle going, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. And it's just sad to look at clothes that just doesn't fit anymore. One of these boxes is outfits I was particularly attached to or really liked, so we'll keep them in case for some reason I have another girl. I'm <laughs> like saying this while I'm crying. I don't actually know if I want a second kid. It's still a very TBD area. All this stuff out here is her summer clothes, so now I gotta find a place for it. Sorry, I'm like struggling to make eye contact because of the crying. Yes? You look so cool. It's our friends. <laughs> the foot. Ding! Do you want to see what life is like up here? It's all clean and empty. This box, all of my journals. Final years of high school. Got into a moleskin phase. Did moleskin for a couple years. I feel like I used to have time to actually sift through this and reflect back. Sometimes I really do wonder like if it were all to just disappear in like a flood or a fire or something like would I be okay? And judging by how little I open this box now, I, I guess I would be okay. But I'm still gonna keep it for now. Maybe when Marla is a teenager, I'll refer back to these to remember how it felt to be a teenager. <laughs> This right here, very strong beginning to thrifting our way to a salon wall. We've got Michelangelo, we've got Da Vinci, and then these guys I found on the side of the road. This one's got some woodworking details. This one is giving Frollo. I honestly think Frollo is like one of the most evil Disney villains of all time, so that's gotta go. Oh, and this is another photograph by the same artist. When in doubt, I believe in picking artwork in pairs so that there's at least a buddy system. I'm gonna start by cleaning off the ones that I got off the side of the street. I think this is straight up a magazine clipping. The back of it is an ad for Johnny Walker Black Label. We've got our lovely molding. The experiment begins. Following many a uh, YouTube video, we have watched a corner has been cut off at 45 degrees. <laughs> Yeah! Look at this fanciness. It has adjustable corners. If it works, I'm pleased. 20 bucks. Oh my gosh. This is what it looks like before painting. And look at that. Now, if you're ready to follow me, we're gonna move on over to our next exhibit, the Ware Collection of Blaschka Glass Models of Plants. Basically, it's this display of over 4,000 individual glass models, over 830 species. It's all made by a glass-blowing father and son duo, and they were dedicated to the project full-time until both of them passed away, and with their death and their lack of apprentices or heirs, they buried with them their glass techniques. Apparently, these pieces are incredibly difficult to replicate, and many glass workers have tried and failed to reproduce them. I honestly find the entire thing so captivating, and I am sad that the one time I did visit Boston a few years ago, I did not know about this, 
and so I have no idea if I'm ever gonna see it in real life. While I was pregnant, we watched a lot of Blown Away, the glass-blowing Netflix show. That show holds a special place for me because it actually fueled a lot of my creative energy during the pandemic. You're just watching these glass artists and their sweat and tears being poured into an art form that honestly, like, doesn't have a great track record of yielding high income. It's also extremely laborious, very hard on the body. Truly the complete opposite energy of those TikToks that are like, follow these easy steps to make a viral TikTok. Like, no, this is all effort, lots of cost, and at the final step, the entire thing could shatter and you would have nothing to show for it. The glass has perplexed me. It just seems so sad to throw away perfectly good glass. I remembered that I had this bag of faux flowers that I used to create a photo shoot back when I was announcing that I was pregnant to you all. Obviously, I had some difficulty throwing these away because they're still in my possession. I think I need to turn this into some kind of botanical display. Whew, yesterday, I taped these all up. I'm pretty pleased. We're gonna stand them up, see if they stay. <gasps> this one features tulips, begonias, roses. Yes! I kind of did two floral arrangements here. Peonies, spider mums, ranunculus. Went to a paper store near me and I found this handmade pressed flower paper and it just sparked joy so we're running with it i'm done all the labels i'm very happy with how they look i can't wait to show you circling back to the frames now that they're all completely dry i'm gonna take this decorative wax finish that i bought dark antique i don't know online i read that this might really send them over the edge of antiquity i feel like this one has a lot of potential because it has these little etchings inside <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Guess what am I? Wedding photo booth, 2010s specifically, something like that. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I was warned that a little goes a long way. This is just spray paint, and then this is with the antiquing wax. It darkens, it mattifies. I think it looks more wood-like. Yes, 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 yes. No regrets. It definitely looks way more interesting. I also think it looks physically heavier, which I really like. I gotta hurry, got a bunch of things to do before Marla takes her afternoon nap. This vintage print is from her old apartment and it's definitely perfect for the botany vibe. I actually really wanna use this Ikea hanger for something in my studio and so I bought the proper vintage hanging contraption for this poster. Oh. Woo! I did a quick stab at a Photoshop to picture it with the shelves. We'll see what Dan says. I made some serious progress yesterday. The floating shelves, I mounted them. I drilled them in myself. Level, stud finder, drywall anchor, screw, cover sticker. And then back here, you might notice. We put up the mounting rail that I ordered. And after all that work with the shelves, leveling, deciding where the holes are gonna go, I am now obsessed with the mounting rail because you just level it at the top. One thing is attached and now a whole world of possibilities is below. Today, I am prepared to eat those exact words as I try to attach things to the mounting rail. Like, I honestly think it's such an amazing thing, mounting something once and then never having to rejig the holes in the wall ever again. But if it's that great, why aren't more people doing it? So, these are the little hooks that will hold on to all of the pictures. And you squeeze it together at the top and then you can get the purlon cord through. And then when you let go, it will Lock in. Stay here, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go get all my pictures. Artwork, hooks and adhesives, the cutting board, more clips and tape. Frames, little clippies. My sanity, hopefully somewhere in this room. Oh, 
I noticed something. My creation of Adam print that I thrifted. Musee Vaticani. Is this like literally from Italy? Oh my god. I really needed that break because I was getting lightheaded from all the squatting, sitting, standing, bending, cutting, taping, holding my breath while using an X-Acto knife and trying not to mess up. I'm seeing the vision. I'm seeing it come together. I've got this little dollar store kit of photo hanging tools. I'm going to do that smart thing where like I lay all of them on the ground so I have a rough game plan of the orientation. I'm liking this. Fun fact, these two paintings are by my mom. Okay, all these loose strings are out and about. I think I'm supposed to coil them up and tuck them out away, but honestly, I'm pleased. This is a raging success. Now, if you're ready to follow me, I'll take you to our next exhibit. A mobile. A mobile is a precious way to capture baby development. At about three months old, they can track it with their eyes. A few weeks later, they can start reaching for it. And then as soon enough, they're identifying things on it Simply adorable. One of the most famous mobile artists was Alexander Calder, and you definitely have seen some of his work at some point. His parents didn't want him to be an artist, so initially he studied engineering. But after a few pivotal moments at sea and in the mountains, he decided it's the artist life for him. Instead of the motor-powered mobiles that were popular at the time, Calder's style embraced the chance that comes with natural air current, which turned out to be a significant turning away from the machine being a critical element of the modernism movement. Calder said, back to nature, and I love it. For supplies, I have chosen steel wire in black, 19 gauge. Now for the floating pieces, again, not wanting to generate new waste, and I feel like this is being real resourceful. This is the cutoff matting from one of the photos that I hung up on the wall. It's a firm cardstock. The color inherently matches something else going on in the room. Time to cut out some leaf-like things. These are the shapes I have. Two circles representing the sun and the moon. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't know if there's anything deep going on here. I think I gotta hole punch them. And then we can start our balancing act. To keep things moving along, I'm just gonna link the tutorial that I'm following, but this pleases me. I'm so happy. You guys, I've done a lot of flow state DIYs in this video, and just, I kinda feel like I've found my new calling. This is so Zen. Alexander Calder, he was very much onto something. Adjust the wire here and there. Watch it gently move. Some parts weren't looking so good, but then like after a few more steps, it felt like they kind of sorted themselves out. I've gotten so fast at stringing these up. I really have entered a flow state where I'm just like methodically doing the same thing over and over. Boom, come on. That was fast. I'm obsessed. I might need to make more of these. Can you wait, just be quiet for a moment? Can we hear it whistling? Oh, here. Is it the right way or the wrong way? Hold in. Don't drop. Oh. Big step. In terms of how I actually feel about this project, I'm so happy. We're really pleased with the outcome and really thrilled that Marlo's no longer sleeping amidst all sorts of storage. There are a few more details I want to put in this room. If you follow me on Instagram at withwendy, you'll get to see them. I wanted to put in a bag and coat check. I also felt like the statue department was a bit underrepresented. Keep an eye out for those updates and thank you all so much for watching another piece of our house makeover. See you next time!